everyone, I'm Amy here with Park Cameras today. And today, as you've probably guessed, we're going to be talking about drones. Jonathan Nicholson has kindly joined us here today from the CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority. And he's going to be letting us know what we can and what we can't do with drones. So thank you for coming in, first no of all. Now, first things first, what do you do at the CAA and how's it going to help us find out what we can do with drones? Sure, so I'm part of the communications team at the, at the CAA. Okay. So um, one of the big projects we've got going at the moment is drone education. So getting out to users, primarily um, amateur sort of people flying sure. drones for fun or photography or whatever and just really trying to explain to them why they need to fly safely and how they can do that. Okay perfect so the CAA have quite a positive approach to drones right they, they yeah. want people to fly. Absolutely so drones have amazing potential for the future to help us for us to enjoy to have fun with um, and we want to make sure that happens um, and that means people flying them safely now yeah. so that uh, the government general public accept drones sure. and we can carry on using them in the way we are and even more. So I guess the more common sense and the safest people fly them now the better it is for the future because we're at quite an early stage with drones. Right? Yeah yeah absolutely so the, there's lots of the general public out there who don't really know about drones are probably uh, yeah. apprehensive of them yeah, sure. um, so we need everybody to be ambassadors now to make sure that they're putting drones in a good light using them sensibly sure. safely using their common sense so that we can keep using them and keep enhancing them and keep yeah. getting more. Okay, so I mean, we've got some drones here which are the kind of drones that we stock. Now, obviously there's loads and loads of different types right up to the big light aircraft looking thing, you know, the huge ones. So how do you sort of categorise drones for, you know, for the sort of codes that you use? Yeah, so for, for most of the people that are buying drones we've got here, there's, there's the drone code, there's the set of rules. It's really once you only start getting into the really large commercial drones and yeah. the ones, as you say, the size of a, an aircraft, yeah. that we really start getting different. And those drones are treated like aircraft, so they yeah. have to be certificated and meet certain standards and fly like an aircraft. But for most of the things that people are buying either to use professionally for photography yeah. or flying for fun, it's it's the same rules, the same regulations, it's the drone code that's at dronesafe.uk on the web and, and follow those rules. Okay, so I mean obviously there's people flying these as hobbyists and some people flying them commercially. So when it comes to actually flying, I mean we'll get onto things like licensing mm -hmm. later, but when it comes to actually flying, what's the difference in the rules? Are there any differences? No, it's exactly the same rules. Right. Uh, once you get out in the field and you're flying a your drone, whether you're doing it for money or whether you're doing it for fun, it's the same rules. Right, okay. Um, uh, so basically, don't fly above 400 feet so you can keep your drone in sight. Don't fly near airports and airfields, right. common sense again. Don't fly near aircraft, yeah. common sense again. Those are the main aviation safety rules, sure. if you like. And then it's don't fly within 50 metres of people unless they're with you, you know, so if yeah. you're filming somebody and you know what you're doing, okay. that kind of thing, yeah. you can. And don't fly within 150 metres of built up areas. And, sure. and don't fly over congested areas. Yeah, okay, so none of those rules are particularly um, over the top, no. really. I mean, they're just safety rules, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the, the keeping it within sight, that's fair enough. I mean, obviously, if there's, God forbid, something like a, a medical helicopter having to come through, you know, to a road incident or something like that, you don't want to be the drone that's getting in the way. Absolutely. So you, you need know. to be able to, to see to be able to move out of the way. Yeah. So it's not just a case of saying, I can see through the camera on the drone on my phone what what it is. Yeah. It's that's no good. The helicopter could be behind your drone. You can't yeah, see it. Yeah, sure. You need to be able to see the drone and the yeah. other thing to be able to move out. And I mean, four hundred feet, huge anyway. You know, that's yeah, really absolutely. high. I mean, so. it, it's it's to put it in perspective, that's kind of the same height as the top of the London Eye. Right, oh, yeah. So, you know, we've been out flying drones and, and the footage you can get at half of that height is amazing. Sure. You don't need to get high. Yeah, and I mean, flying within 50 metres of people, again, if it's people you don't know, why are you flying within 50 metres of them anyway? Yeah. And, and things like that. So, if, if they're the people that you need to film are within your group, you know, and then, you know, that's kind of, sure. kind yeah. of all if you, you need, really. If you want to really. do yeah, wedding photography, you brief the people, you, they're under yeah. your control, then absolutely fine. Okay, perfect. So the rules aren't over the top, which is which is good because I think a lot of people feel that they don't really know the rules and yes. just assume that they're going to be um, quite harsh, mm. if you like. But but they're not at all, no, no. and they're just for common sense and safety. Absolutely. So now that's the same for commercial and hobbyists, right? So 
What's the difference? What do you have to have to become a commercial pilot? Okay, so the difference kicks in is if you know you're going to make money from your drone flying okay. before you do it. So if you've been arranged to do wedding photography or estate agents ask you to film a property and you've, you've negotiated a fee in right. advance, that's commercial work. Okay. And that's when you need a commercial approval, which is, is basically you go to a, a provider with training courses, probably a couple of day course, you do that course, you have a manual, an operations manual, which is for you, which says how you're going to fly, how you're going to protect things and people. Um, all that comes to us and we give you an approval. So that's not, it's not particularly difficult then, no, is it? No, and, and it's good stuff that you learn, it's useful stuff. It's yeah. stuff about how airspace works, it's stuff about what the laws are, how to fly your drone better. Yeah. It's stuff that's useful for you to know anyway, it's not just paperwork. So stuff that really could actually build your confidence when it comes to Absolutely. flying drones. Yeah, and, and get you shooting better footage and providing better services for your customers. Yeah. Because people may actually not be flying them as much as they could be. Yeah, really. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess I think the CAA you were saying works quite closely with things like councils and things like that in order for everyone to know what safe drone usage is. Yes, we're trying to get out to as many people as possible to explain to them what the rules are, what you can and can't do, how to fly safely, what's common sense. And yeah. if everybody does that and everybody gets that information out there and follows the drone code then you know, hopefully we can see more opportunities for drones. Yeah, I mean, because this is really important right now, because obviously even drones like this, you know, some of the, um, I mean, these two certainly can deal with quite harsh wind mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, that'd be great for things like agricultural use, farming, things like that, surveying. Yeah. And you were saying that there's a massive market for that. Absolutely, there's a huge commercial market. In the future, it's predicted that it's going to be billions and billions for the year. Um, and there's a government consultation out at the moment on right. drones, runs till the end of March. That covers everything from amateur use, fun use, right up to the commercial uses. So Amazing. it's really important if people are using a drone that they do that consultation, put their views forward so that we hear all the views. Okay, so, and you can get that through the Department of Transport? Yeah, Department for Transport website under their consultations at gov.uk. Okay, so any of our drone users out there, if that would be a great thing to do, Absolutely. right? So go onto the website, get involved with that, because the more, the more we can have safe drone usage, there'll be even more of it in the future, and even better for the companies who are now investing in creating drones, you know, the more that they can see people are using them safely, that there's not too many hurdles being put in place, then the more they'll create, the further their technology will go, I guess. Absolutely, and somebody starting with drones today, you know, starting with some of the ones you've got here, yeah. can absolutely progress. You know, there, there is going to be a lot of demand for drone commercial use, so, you know, somebody starting today with a Phantom or Mavic or whatever, yeah. um, you know, they could progress in 10, 15 years time into being a, a commercial operator sure. on a very high scale. Yeah, well that's, I think that's a really important thing to stress then, that drones are, are great, but as long as you use your common sense and, and, and the safety rules that you mentioned, I mean, they're, they're a small amount, you know, it's not a huge thing to remember, no. so, which is, which is important, because if you're out flying, it's great to be able to just think, right, these are the six things I've got to keep in mind, yeah. and, that, and that's it, yeah. really. And, and use, uh, yeah, there's a lot of other advice and, and uh, out there as well. So things like NATS, the air traffic people have released an app called Drone Assist, which literally uses the GPS on your camera or your tablet oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, or your phone and absolutely tells you what's around you, what the airspace is above your head, okay. and gives you advice, really simple advice about whether where you are is a good place to fly. Okay, so if you so if our drone users out there they get onto a say drone safe UK, yep. they've got the checklist there, they know exactly how they should be flying near people, near buildings, absolutely. that sort of thing. And then they've got the NATS Assist app then that tells you everything you need to know we actually had a colleague download it over the weekend um who, who took out the mavic there and he was saying it's absolutely fantastic you you literally it picks up the gps location and it says no don't fly here but 50 meters along the road it'll say okay you're all right now absolutely. sort of thing and it takes the worry out of it yeah. we don't expect drone users who have no sort of knowledge of aviation mm -hmm. our pilots or whatever to know what goes on above no, their head. No, sure. so so that's where the app sort of yeah. takes that out of the equation for them and just gives them the advice get onto drone safe uk and then the that's the assist app so that's yeah. uh n for november ats app Get that, and uh, you'll be you'll be prepped, won't you, for sure, all your drone use? Yeah. Brilliant. If you do have any further questions, please give us a call, email in. Um, on the website, you can check out the range of drones that we stock, or pop a comment below, and we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. So, thank you for watching the video. I've been Amy with Park Cameras, and thanks again for coming in. Jonathan.